Now the Bereans were of no, more noble characters than the Thessalonians, for they received the masses with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of a pregnant Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. God our Father, in Jesus' name, you called us as holy saints. And thank you for guiding us to worship you in spirit and truth. You justified and made us alive. And you enabled us to speak in our spirits. We will worship you in Holy Spirit. Please be with us. Only by faith and only with the obedience to you, may all of the saints be able to give the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For it's the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time, we have to repent. Last week, we listened to the sermon. The title was, You Are a Blessing. After you believe Jesus and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, you are the source of blessing. You have to enjoy uh, the blessed life. And we, we can enjoy the blessed blast life by obeying the commandments. Please look, at, look back on yourself, whether you have uh, 
uh, kept the commandment or not. And let's pray for all of our circumstances to be blessed. Let's pray. Holy and the living God, our Father, thank you for your grace. We we don't deserve to come to here, but you made us be the children of God. And you also guide us to be here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for all these graces. Please accept our worship service. Uh, make this a, make this 
worship service more spiritual so that we can meet with your face during this time. Make all of us be guided to be the true worshipers who can listen to the voice of you. And make all of us be able to discern your will and fulfill your will as a song rock people. And God our Father, whether we live or not, we are yours. So may all of us be the faithful offices of the Song Rock Church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and God our Father. We all want to return to the Word. Make each worship centers, make each pastors, and each family members return to the Word so that we may confess that the words of eternal life is, is in this Song Rock Church. To whom shall we, uh, shall we go? And through the precious servant of God, the pastor Kiran Kim, and through his message, may all of us be the true witness of Jesus so that we can fill this uh, worship place with the uh, people. May all of us be humble in our circumstances. And when the church is in trouble, God our Father, guide us to be the true helper for the church. And God our Father, there are many pastors in the churches, but your beloved Songmak Church and your beloved servant of God, the Kirong Kim, since you revealed your secret to him, by listening to this message, may all of us be the humble, the children of God. May all of us be able to discern and listen to the message of the Pastor Kim for the sake of the church. Please listen to the prayers of the Overseer Kim in his whole life. And God our Father, make all of us be the tributaries of Jesus. And God our Father, there are some Song Rock people who are deceived by the worldly the lies. Please, God, uh, make them be given the chance to repent and return to the church and may all of us be the one as the true song of people under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And God our Father, please anoint the mouth of the Overseer Kim as a messenger with the wisdom and the power and inspiration of the Word of God. And please inspire the Diopasio Kim with the power of the blood of Jesus and the inspiration of the Word of God. And also, uh, may all of us be able to receive the spiritual message in our hearts so that we can be the true witness of Jesus. And God our Father, make all of our souls be able to receive the joy from you by meeting with you during the worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your road and Your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
야 성령 충만 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 할렐루야 할렐루야 앞뒤 사람과 성도의 share greetings each other Let's be unchanging barriers. Let's encourage each other. God our Father, today, those who seek for heaven, please give their offerings this time. Please uh, bless and remember those who get their offering for building the church and make all of the family members who gave this offering for building the church make them be prosper in all of their circumstances and daily lives. And please remember and bless those who gave their tithe since they prepared their family members to return to the God and for the church. There are those who gave their monthly offering for the church and make all of the family members who give their monthly offering be blessed in their circumstances and daily lives. Please bless those who give their thanksgiving. Make their souls be blessed. Make their circumstances be blessed. Make their flesh be blessed. And please remember and bless those who give their uh, Lord's Day offering for this time and make them gain the testimony of God, the God of the all blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. May the grace and the blessing be with you all in the name of Jesus. Amen.
자 오늘 우리 영혼에 주시는 하나님의 말씀은 Today's God's word is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 to 25. We'll do a response reading. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gift, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in, in a tongue does not speak to man but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to man for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have your prophecy. He who prophesies uh, is the greater than who speaks in tongues. Unless it interprets, so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you? Unless it brings some revelation, knowledge, and the prophecy, the word of instruction. Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as flute or harp, how will anyone know that tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound clear, call. Who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intangible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You are just spe speaking it into the air. Undoubtedly, there are sort of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do grasp the meaning of the what someone is saying, I'm a foreigner to the speaker, and he's a foreigner to me. So it is with you, since you are eager to have a spiritual gift, try to excel in gifts that build the church. For this reason, anyone speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my, my mind. If you are praising God with your spirit, how can the one find himself among those who do not understand it? Say, Amen to your thanksgiving, since he does not know what you are saying. You may be giving thanks well enough, but the other man is not edified. I thank God that I speak tongues more than all of you, but in the church. I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than the 10,000 words in tongue. Brothers, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. It is in the law, it is written, through the man of strange tongues and through the lips of foreigners, I will speak to the people, but even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord.
Tongues then are sign, are not believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for believers, not for unbelievers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues, and some who do not understand or some unbelievers come in, will they not say you are out of your mind? But if, if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying, he will be convinced that by all that he's a sinner and will be judged by all, and the secret of his heart will be laid bare, so he will fade down, worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. Amen. Today, God is also going to speak us for the sake of the overseer, for all of our souls. Let's pray, crying out Jesus' name. God our Father you commanded us this holy day that's why you came we came here and we are going to listen to your words may all of us gain the power and the blessings from us from you in Jesus name we pray Amen Speak with the Spirit. Speak with the Spirit. Please remember this title. Let's read today's outline. God is the Spirit. He created man and increased him so that man filled the earth and the language was developed. Man's language is speech, sound, However, the Word of God is a spirit and life. Man's spirit is also spirit and life. However, the Word of God is a life-giving spirit, whereas man's spirit is a life-giving spirit. Human speech is a sound used for communication, but it cannot speak of the mystery of matters of the spirit, nor can man understand the mystery of the spirit alters. Yet the spirit also alters its mysteries to God, and God hears them, God hears of the spirit affairs, which only spirit knows. When we leave the sinners, our spirit was mute. Prophecy is about hope. It is God's word. The gospel is a spiritual word. Whoever speaks in tongue speaks to God. He must pray with the mind and with the spirit. Amen. Today is January 21st, which is the 50th anniversary of the Pastor Kim si joos coming to the South Korea. Please give him a big hand. <laughs> At the time, 50 years ago, 31 spies from the north invaded into the South Korea to kill, assassinate President Park Jong-hee. But 30 of them were killed. And, but uh, he surrendered and he became the pastor. He was brought to the south to be the pastor and he has been doing many um, many works for the church. Actually, I planted the Songrak Church, the Sodemun, the Pyeongdong first. And I was about to start a construct 
for building the church uh, in the b u l g w a n g d o n g But at the time, the 31 spies invaded the South Korea. So I was in trouble. So I changed my mind that I would move to Gangnam to build my church. That's why I built the Songrak Church in here, s h i n g i l d o n g And because of the event, the invasion, and because of the Kim Shin Jo, at the time the spy, uh, Korean government to create the reserve the army for the Korean security. That's how the Korean society has been protected by the reserve the army. So he also moved to the b u l g w a n g d o n g where I planted the church for the first time. So these kind of events are like the guidance of the uh, God. The wind blows at, uh, wherever it pleases. No one can imagine. But anyway, on this day, exactly 50 years ago, on this very same day, the event of the coming to South Korea happened. He has now around 10 children. But unfortunately, um, his family members who remained in the north were publicly killed in front of the people. So, can you imagine how much his uh, mind is in trouble? So, you saints should be his family members and i also made my mind to be his uh the true brother so i have encouraged him so far so please bless him and to share great things with him let's give him a big hand again <laughs> Speak with the Spirit. Now, we speak. Through the bodily voices, we speak. In the old days, there was only one, one language, one sound. But after the event of Babel, Babel Tower, and all the people were scattered, and at the same time, many languages appeared. So the term the babel means the murmuring, to murmur, which means um, hard to understand. It's a sound, but but since the sounds, it sounds like a murmuring, we can hardly understand what it says. So. So it refers to perplexed sounds. That's what the Bible means. So ten thousands of the languages exist right now. And right now, uh, around the three or four thousands of languages are used. So The language of the man is for communication. 
to communicate our emotion and knowledge and thoughts to others. Also, we, we can be given, we can listen to others' emotion, opinions, and thoughts. That's how we can communicate through, uh, through the language. Without language, we can never communicate each other. Vance, we can never know how we think about others but by communicating we can counsel and we can understand each other Likewise, God is the Word and Spirit. The Spirit means the living one. So the book of John chapter 4, verse 23 and the 24 says, God is the Spirit, so the worshipers must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And this is those, these are those uh, whom the Father seeks. What kind of the people God calls? God seeks. God seeks those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. We have to listen to this message carefully. God is alive, God is the living one. In the time of Abraham, his family, his relatives, all of the surrounding people of Abraham uh, used to worship the idol. But the idol can never speak. Idol does not have life. It does not speak. But Abraham didn't accept I, the idol to worship and he thought if there's a God he must be alive and he can listen to and he can hear all of, all, all of our emotions and he can understand our thoughts and as an as the Almighty One, He can be the governor of us who can give the commands, commandment to us. Idol can never give you commandments. It's like the binding, binding yourselves, being cursed if you worship the idol. But if you worship the idol, if there's a God, God is, God is the one who commands you. That's why the Abraham was selected as the only one person by God. So God commanded him to leave the country, leave the homeland, and the father and brothers. And God, God set the Abraham's faith as righteousness. And he commands, uh, commanded him to be a blessing. This is the faith. So after, after the Abraham, all the believers should have the faith as Abraham's. God is a spirit and God is alive. That's what Abraham believed. Then how do we see God? We can never see him. We can never touch him. He's not a material. Then how can he know? Or how can he experience him? So God's spirit appeared as the word. So the word of God is a spirit. So Jesus said, the word is important and the flesh counts for nothing. 
And the, my word is a spirit and life. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 20, uh, 63. So, His word is a spirit. If you just consider God's word just a sound, we will perish. Gospel is also spirit. And the law is a spirit. And the law was uh, given through the angels who are the servants of the heaven. So those who receive the law are those who receive the spirit of slave. But those who receive the words through the Jesus, since Jesus is the Son of God, those are those people are those who receive the spirit of the son. So those who receive the spirit of the slaves, they can be blessed, but, but they can never save others. Since angels and just can never get into the man's spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can do. Uh, when the Lot and uh, Lot's family was were redeemed, they were redeemed by the hands of angels. And the Peter of the Apostles was also brought out of the prison by the hands of uh, the angels. But the Holy Spirit can get into your spirit. This is the benefits of the receiving the Holy Spirit. That's what you have to understand very carefully. In the book of John chapter 14 says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will know him, but the world can never understand him nor seize him. But you know him. You do know him. So by receiving the Holy Spirit, in your flesh, the, in your spirit, which is inside of your flesh, you receive the Holy Spirit. So you are the temple of God. So your spirit is surrounded by your flesh. So your flesh and your spirit are both are the temple of God. So God's word is the spirit and man is a spirit. But God is a life-giving spirit, whereas the man is a living spirit who can, who can live only by God. God is a life-giving spirit, whereas we are living spirits. So, God does not communicate not with your flesh, but with your spirit. So when you come to God, it is your spirit that communicates and have the fellowship with God. Your spirit is meeting with God. So the Bible says, God does not select the people by appearance, but by heart. God seeks spirit. Uh, before a mirror, you can judge your appearances. If you boast, if you boast, boast about your appearance before God, but the but God does not accept it. So the term the worship means meeting with God's face. That's why the Bible says that you have to worship in spirit. Of course, you are sitting here, you are sitting here 
with your flesh, of course, your flesh also gets the benefits from this worship service, but but your flesh can never receive the eternal life. The Holy Spirit brings eternal life to you, but it's the only the, your spirit that can receive uh, the eternal life. It is not your flesh, not your cloth, but your soul that should meet with God. That's what the spiritual life is about. If you are not interested in the spiritual matters, but apparently you, you might seem like a godly people in the church, but you can get any attention from God. Since God does not care about the man's appearances, but God searches man's spirit. Of course, our flesh can give sounds, give a speech. But fleshly speech can never be brought to God. But in the time of the law, the law is the de uh, de uh, fleshly decree according to the Bible. So the law gives the limitations to which the people of God get close to God. So the law uh, revealed the limitation of the people. So the people under the law, they are keeping the commandments and they receive uh, temporary lives from God, not for their soul. But after they die, there's no benefit for their spirit because the law can never save the man's soul. So those who are under the law are on those who are under the curse. They serve God. They can keep their keep them alive, and and they can gain some property from blessing. But there's nothing more than that. That's why they are they are not saved. They have to be judged after they die. But those who believe in Jesus are not condemned. Why? Since they meet with God in spirit. So when you pray, whether you speak in sp uh, spirit or in flesh, is what you have to consider. Even, even though we are making sounds through our mouth, we can never, well, we can pray no more than we thought, we think, and we imagine. Oh God, uh, make me devote ourselves, make me serve you, this is what we can pray for in our fleshly mouth. But, but by those prayer, can you save your life? So praying in prayer in with our mind is beneficial but at the same time you have to pray in spirit i think the, the choirs uh, are very good at singing i'm not good at singing but i have some i have a a hint to sing well in Texas, the United States, 
I visited a college of Christ. Um, the church uh, didn't use any instruments. And the sound was around the 1,000s of choirs. Um, just singing a song without instrument. So I was very moved by their singing. So I couldn't enjoy any other instrument sounds or other choirs sounds. Even I was even troubled in listening to the instrument sounds. I was so uh, I was so moved by their singing. So I can recognize that uh, how much beautiful the the people's sounds are. So I could get a hint of the singing better from them. Even I can I want to give them a hint to my choir. But anyways, so singing with my mind and singing in my spirit, that's what the Bible commands us. You have to be able to sing even in spirit. In 1961, at the entrance of the church, I listened to a song. I can never forget it. That sound of the song was so beautiful. But there was no, no one else in the church. I and my brother, a fellow worker in the church, were the only the person who or in the church building. But I can listen to a beautiful song. And we said to each other, it was, it was the angels who sing a song. So, with our mind, we can sing. But with our spirit, we can sing. And the Bible uh explains about the singing of the angels so in the same sense we can pray not not just with my mind but with our spirit what is the difference after uh, what is the difference we he exper we experience after believing Jesus those who believe in my name will speak in a new tongue so after the resurrection of Jesus and even after the ascension right after the time the Holy Spirit comes on us came on us we could speak in tongues this is not a natural sign this is not what happened in the nature. This is the this is only the sign for the saints, not those under the law, but those who believe in Jesus. So by this sign, you can make it clear that to how much the Bible, how. Um, Truthful, the Bible is. And you can recognize these, the signs as the experience of life. So, those who do not believe in Jesus can never speak in tongue. Speaking a new tongue means speaking a new language. Literally, it means tongue language. So in the Pentecost, the people could see the new. Uh, people could see the tongues of fire. 
And the Bible says the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in a new tongue. But before believing Jesus, our spirits were all dead by sin. Even under the law, people under the law, they were uh, they could they could experience in their flesh the blessing and the salvation from God they could get help in their flesh but not in their soul but by Jesus merit his blood by his blood our spirit get alive, get saved. So after, uh, before believing Jesus, we could, we could not say anything in my spirit, in our spirit. Our spirit should be able to communicate with God, but our spirit were mute before we believed in Jesus. But by the merits of Jesus, our spirit get alive. Then our spirit, by then, uh, uh, after then, our spirit can speak. After we baptize, after we receive the Holy Spirit, when we speak in tongues, we can recognize that, oh, our spirit get cleansed and by the Holy Spirit my spirit is alive. That's the testimony, testimony and experience of us. Through the baptism we buried our old self the sinner and by the blood by Jesus we were reborn through the bat when we were baptized. And when the Holy Spirit came up came upon you, how can you recognize that the Holy Spirit came upon you? Speaking tongue. That is the first sign of the Holy Spirit. Why God give you, gives you this sign to give you the benefit? Holy Spirit manifests Himself. When the fruit is ripe, and the fruit gives off its uh, smell, in the same way, God sealed that we receive the grace by the Holy Spirit. We are saved, we are forgiven, we are God's people. As a guarantee, He gives is the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit to us. And what is the testimony that the Holy Spirit came upon us? As the Holy Spirit enabled us, we can speak in a new tongue. So you begin to speak in a new tongue after receiving the Holy Spirit. In 1962, I received the Holy Spirit and could speak it in a new tongue, uh, 1957. I was praying, but suddenly my tongue started to pro propel. I could not control it at a time, at the moment. So that's how I could recognize that the Holy Spirit came upon us, came upon me. And Jesus said, "Those who believe in me will speak a new tongue." But after five years, I became an evangelist, and I started to uh, give the gospel to others. But at the, at that time. No matter how much, how many people gathered, 
In the crusade, all of the people could speak in tongue. Of course, you can see many people speak in tongue right now, but at the time, uh, the few people speak in tongue, spoke in tongue. So, I was, uh, I was condemned and criticized as a heretic, heretic, heretic evangelist because I uh, made the people receive the Holy Spirit and speak in the new tongue. But no one could stop it. And I have lived by these three uh, the powers and the signs. I was not able person, but I completely recognized that I'm a sinner. I was saved by the precious blood. So I believe, so I confess it. I believe in Jesus' blood. I believe in Jesus' blood. I believe in Jesus' blood. I believe in Jesus' bl blood. By the precious blood, I became a new person. I became alive by the precious blood. Precious blood. And He gave me the ho Holy Spirit. And I received the Holy Spirit and experienced it. I experienced the, uh, the precious blood by the Holy Spirit and God Himself. And I could speak. I could preach the God's Word by the Holy Spirit. So by the Christ, precious blood, Holy Spirit, and His Word, by these three things, I have lived my life. How I can endure? How how can I be uh, patient with uh, persecutions and surroundings? If I use my own brain, I could be patient with it. But only by the precious blood and the power of the Holy Spirit and His Word, since his word is truth and the Holy Spirit only speaks about the glory of Jesus not his own word but the Jesus word and his glory that's what the Holy Spirit manifests to us and that's also what I am doing for so with the three things the three things are all about my ministry, all about my life. Since the Holy Spirit comes in me, the first sign was in speaking a new tongue. If it is, if it is not necessary, why did, why would Jesus tell us to speak in a new tongue? But Jesus clearly said, "Those who believe it, those who believe in me." will speak in the new tongue. Right after Jesus died on a cross and after his resurrection, and Jesus, who is the preparing our rooms for in heaven, said in that way, the words of Jesus speak in a new tongue but the people uh, some people cr uh, consider the speaking tongue as crazy and unintelligible and some people even say I don't like I don't like to uh, speak in a new tongue pretending to be uh, the intelligent but that's what G the Lord Jesus said those people just consider Jesus' word as the words of Nazarene, not the uh, not the words of the not the words of God. But but those but they are blaspheming against the God, even though it is ununderstandable. If, but when but if God commands you have to receive it with thanks and you have to do it um, in a past when I visited uh, the countryside I uh, and uh, I and my uh, fellow workers uh, having a rest and the one old man 
uh, they brought, brought us some peaches, which was called it tastes a bit it, it tasted bitter my my fellow walker ate it well he said pretend to eat pretend to taste it well the old man gave us the precious one so we have to pretend to eat enjoy the eating the bitter the peach so I eat uh, I eat the food when the people uh, brought me some food even though it is not delicious but I pretend uh, to enjoy it so in the same way Jesus came to the earth died on the cross and after the resurrection he ascended to heaven and speaking in a new tongue is a Jesus word, Jesus command. But then, how dare dare you say that? So you don't like you don't like to speak in a new tongue. You have to weep and repent. If you if you don't have the signs of Jesus. Does it seem necessary? Does it seem unnecessary about the signs of Jesus? Jesus was not a doctor. But Jesus told us to speak in a new tongue. Jesus was not a dean of the a seminary nor professor, but, but the president of the, the dean and the professors of the seminary should speak in tongue. Why? Because just because of Jesus commands you. So that's why I speak in tongue. So that's why I planted a church as an uh, independent church. If I belong to a denomination, there's the, some constitution and uh, assemblies. So I will be I will be pressured in my ministry that's that's why I decided to uh, plan an independent church that's the song rock church you can hardly listen to these teachings like around the 40 or the 50 years ago only in, in the Pan Pentecostal church the, the saints could speak in a new tongue if you speak in a new tongue in other church you'll be uh, condemned as a heretic people at a time and the, even the Pentecostal church and the full gospel church were uh, condemned as a heretic uh, the denominations so that's why we are persecuted as a heretic people because we cast out our demons. But, at, but as the time goes on, it will disappear. The persecution will disappear. But this is what the Lord Jesus commanded us. Speak in a new tongue and to cast out a demon in my name. This is the beginning, just the beginning of the sign. Speak in a new tongue is the beginning. So in the first Corinthians chapter 12 it says the Holy Spirit manifests his signs and gifts to give us the benefits and the speaking of new tongue is just the beginning when the Holy Spirit came on the people in the Pentecost they began to speak in, to in tongues but among them some people could speak in a wisdom speak, uh, who could speak in uh, some some others could speak in the uh, knowledgeable words others could uh, interpret the tongues and the heal the heal the sick people so gradually the believers can receive the gift we have so many parts in our body through ear you can never see you can just listen through eyes you can see but you can never listen 
So all the part, each part has its own duty. So these signs, uh, the, the gifts, are the duty of the parts. But people just, the people just remained speaking a new tongue. But after that, you can receive the wisdom. So, I always pray for me to receive the wisdom and the knowledge and the faith of God. I try my best to do all the work with the Holy Spirit. What is the difference? Me and others. What is the difference? Most of the people just consider their conscience as their uh, to be their righteousness and the standard. But I consider the Holy Spirit to be my righteous righteousness. If I do not speak in of the Holy Spirit, I don't deserve. I'm not able. I'm not responsible. So in my whole life, with the precious blood with the Holy Spirit, and with the words of God, I do my work. I don't get back to these three things. Lord Jesus said, to those who believe in me can speak in a new tongue. This is the beginning, but why don't you do that? Because, because you don't pray. Without pray, this kind of this can cannot come out. There's there's no verses in the Bible. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, you can heal the sick people. But concerning the speaking a new new tongue, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in a new tongue. That's what the Bible says. Only at the degree 100, uh, 100 degree, the water can boil. In the same way, by being f filled with the Holy Spirit, anyone can begin to speak in a new tongue. Even though you received the received, uh, gift of the speaking in a new tongue 10 years ago, but now you can't. Why? You are supposed to progress in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, faith, the powers, discerning the spirits, many gifts. You just put out the, the Holy Spirit's fire. That's why you stop uh, speaking a new tongue. Those kind of the people are like uh, who just to taste the Holy Spirit and corrupt it again. Even after I pass away, the Song Rock Church should keep manifesting this gift of the Holy Spirit as written in the Bible. The barrier is only about the returning to the Word in the Bible. Even though you are being persecuted, you will be judged whether, whether you did good or not. So you have to speak in a new tongue very a lot. So G uh, even the Paul, uh, Paul the Apostle said, I speak in a new uh, I speak in tongues more than all of you. But it's not to the man, but to God in my spirit. That's why the, no one can uh, understand what if you, if you speak in a new tongue. The Bible says it is only the Spirit who can search our hearts, our mysteries. By the Holy Spirit, even I can, I can even know what I'm saying in tongue, in spirit. My spirit can reveal all the mysteries, all the hidden mysteries to God. 
So during a uh, while you were speaking a new tongue, some demons were driven out. So speaking a new tongue is very beneficial, but not for the church, just for you. So the, so the Bible says, I want all of you, every one of you to uh, prophecy in the church. A prophecy is not about the fortune telling. It does not mean the uh, fortune telling. The covenant in the Bible means the prophecy the first covenant which is uh, the law and the prophecy prophets are about the prophecy so by the time of the John the Baptist the first covenant was fulfilled and the new covenant is also under the prophecy which is about the second coming of Jesus Jesus will come again so uh, the prophecy is not about uh, for, fortune telling but uh, speaking the gospel and the words of God to others why do you listen to the God's word not just for this moment since the word is of, uh, the words of eternal life if you forsake uh, the, the words of eternal life in your heart that's the end even by the by the time of the uh, end time of a resurrection we can live by the eternal life that's why we call the eternal call it the eternal life when we give when we give the gospel to others we can listen to his words the gospel but by the same word you be called by Jesus by this gospel if you're saying that uh, receive the Holy Spirit this is also the prophecy it contains the it contains that uh, you will be resurrected just as Jesus was by the Holy Spirit that's why we say the Holy Spirit as a prophecy we are not just just receiving the gospel through our ear but it on it just it also works for uh, for eternal life and Jesus prayed and I gave my word to them the word worldly people hate them whoever received the Jesus words was uh, persecuted this is uh, the receiving the words of Jesus is not about the uh, physical happiness in the world we are the church we are the body of the Christ we are the body of the Jesus but Jesus was not a, uh, the person uh, clothed with a, a fine cloth but about me say see people are healed the demons are casted out and to the pe poor people the gospel will be preached this is about the Jesus Jesus, Jesus drove out the demons but he was uh, criticized uh, as the crazy person Jesus was not clothed with a fine cloth now we can see the body of Christ the church is not about gaining the uh, physical happiness even Romans chapter 8 says we are testified to be the children of God and we call the Father Abba Father and with the Christ we are co heir of the heaven therefore to be glorified with Jesus we have to be persecuted at the same time as Christ so the the body of Jesus the church is to be persecuted by the world so the Paul the Apostle said I have the marks of Jesus Jesus was uh, Jesus have the scar on his arms 
by being nailed. Jesus had a, had a scars being speared. But in the same way, I have the marks of Jesus, the church, is the place where Jesus' sufferings exist. So every week, when you participate in the Holy Communion, we commemorate the death of Jesus, and we have to preach this. We prophecies to others that Jesus will come again. Church has the marks of Jesus, scars of Jesus. We are bearing, we are bearing, we are bearing, we are bearing the suffering of the Christ on our body with the prophecies. We are pre we prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus. But you pretend to do your best, but you fall away. Is it beneficial to you? You pretend to be faithful, but you desecrate the faith. You fall away. I don't understand those kind of people. I can never understand those kind of the people. Have they deceived me, the pastor? That's what I thought. So dear people, you have to speak in a new tongue for yourself, but for the church, evangelize, teach, teaching. All these are for prophecies. So with the wisdom of the word, with the knowledge of the word, and the faith of the word, and the power of the word, let's say, by the Holy Spirit, speak louder, by the Holy Spirit, wisdom of the word, by the Holy Spirit, knowledge of the word, by the Holy Spirit, faith, by the Holy Spirit, powers, please, give all this to me. So you have to be the prophet. You have to be the one who prof prophesies to edify the church. You can speak in tongue for your soul, for your for yourself. You can speak in tongue, but for other churches, you have to be the teacher. You have to be the messenger. You have to, you have to be the prophet. Do you understand that? If you understand, say Amen. Please stand up. For the Holy Spirit to guide you to be the spiritual person. If it's just a taste of the sign of the Holy Spirit, if it stop, no. We should be able to manifest these nine signs of the Holy Spirit in our church. I will make it happen. We have to make our, all of the family members to experience the powers. I listened to a story. One family members were having the family worship service, but the father was not able to preach the gospel. They just uh, uh, kept on speaking tongue for about 30 minutes. But suddenly, each family members could speak interpret the tongues just because they don't they don't pray they don't experience that signs let's pray aloud God make our family members receive the signs of the Holy Spirit to be able to manifest the signs of the Holy Spirit to work for the church with the signs of the Holy Spirit let's pray all together in spirit to be able to work in spirit pray
우리 성당인 여러분. Song of people. 오늘 말씀 좀잘 들으셨어요? Have you listened to this message well? Have you understand this message? 인사를 성령 참남다 그냥 성령 이 땅사 그저 성령 성령 역사하는 곳이라니까 if you just come to the church just to see and taste the signs of the Holy Spirit, you will fall away. Will you fall away? Will you wither? From now on, in our family members, we have to be filled with the, these nine signs of the Holy Spirit. If you, say, uh, if you think it that way, say Amen. Let's pray again. For me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be able to manifest the signs of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray again. We 방을 말한 방을 통해 말 병고치는 새를 다 주시옵소서. 하나님 아버지. God our Father. From now on. Please make the Songrock Church filled with the signs of the Holy Spirit. May all of us be able to pray more. In, pray, uh, in Jesus' name we prayed. Sing louder.
예수께 아래라 주 예수 앞에 다 아래여라 주 우리의 친구니 무엇이나 근심하지 말고 주 예수께 아래라 May the grace of Jesus Christ and the greatest love of God our Father and the fellowship and inspiration of the Holy Spirit be on those who speak in tongue and those who prophesy for the sake of the church forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the 50th anniversary of his coming to South Korea from North Korea. He was a dead person on the day 50 years ago. For his celebration, let us listen to his message from Shin Jo Kim. Let us give him a big hand. I want to give thanks to God on this holy day. who allow me to have this time after the service and to our beloved overseer and also to all of you who are loving Song Rock Church. I really appreciate this chance to give the speech. I want to tell you first that in 1968, on January 21st, I was 26, uh, 26 years old. I could survive on the very day, so God allowed me to have the freedom that you are enjoying as a South Korean citizen. However, when I was a believer, living with you, in this South Korea. When I didn't know who God is for 13 years, I lived in South Korea as an unbeliever. Of course, there were many enjoyable days. I was living just in my flesh, not in spirit, because I knew nothing about the spiritual world. I could enjoy a culture in my South Korea, but at the same time, because of my status as a former spy from the North, I saw many sufferings and troubles. I used to heavily drank, even making up my mind to commit suicide. As you know, South Korean government was military regime at the time. So I was even brought to Korean National Intelligence Service to be inspected several times. I spent two years in Korean Army Secret Service being inspected. During the time, I regretted so much surrendering to the South. My mind was in serious trouble. But I came to meet my wife. She was a passionate Christian. Her name is Choi Jung Hwa. With her prayer and endurance, I could come to this church, Song Rock Church, where you now attend. So, I had lived as an unbeliever for 13 years, 13 years, and started to attend the church in 1981. So, for 37 years as a Song Rock Saint. I have always been saying to myself, for my soul, for my church, and for my teacher, I will guard my church. I will repay God's grace. I will repay my overseer's grace. But in my church life, there have been a lot of persecutions and temptations. In South Korea, so God blessed the country. Uh, 50 years of time has passed so my age is now 76 I'm now retired 
and social institutions and other mega churches have tried to pers persuade me to be their member. Whenever I was tempted to leave the church, the overseer counseled me to remain in the church, guarding my church. That is what I pray for. In Sambong, we Bear Academy House, and here, Christian Worship Center, I remain a Songrak person. I want to tell you, this year is my 50th anniversary and Winter Olympic will be held in Korea and there are some confusing situations between the South and the North. All mass media are paying all of their attention to the issue. And I thought, how should I draw the attention to my church, Song Rock Church, in this 50th anniversary? How to draw the attention from the mass media? I have the last chance. When I was ordained as a pastor, I could receive a great attention from the mass media. So under these circumstances, how should I draw the attention from the mass media? I prayed, saying, Please, God, help me for the last time. For the sake of the God's glory, for the sake of the Song Rock Church, please help me this time. Coming to today's service, I wept. Why? I said to God, God, thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you, God, I said. For this 50th anniversary, five of the major TV broadcasting in the United States called me. And also, five major broadcastings from the United States. And also, from Japan, NHK, another radio and TV broadcasting also called me. A major British broadcasting also called me to interview me. Each of the broadcasting asked me to come to their hotel for an interview, but I said, No, I cannot. I am too old to drive a car. You come to my church where I attend, where I serve. Then they come to the church on the appointed time where you now have Sunday service on the seventh floor and interviewed me. We have only one purpose. Our God, we are the children of God. By the time we get into the Father's kingdom, we pray for, how should I give glory to God? How should I serve and work for my church? That is what we should pray for while we temporarily stay on earth. This is how I This is how high I have led my church life for 30 Eight years in the Song Rock Church. Please give me a warm round of applause. I was a public figure. And now I am. I have reputation in Korean society, even now. But I have agonized. How should I use my reputation for God? How should I serve my God with my reputation? That is how I've served the church for 38 years. That's that is how I have served the overseer. So this 11 a.m. service is broadcast by the major broadcasting and media. Major broadcasting and media interviewed me recording our church service. So through internet and their own channels, TVs, this service is now being broadcast to the all around the world. Hallelujah. Chance. You, you must take the chance. Once you missed it, it never comes again. How should you use my vessel? 
After the interview with the major media around the world, Korean media also asked me for interview. Joseon, Donga, in spite of the recent Korean complicated situation, Donga, Doha, ATV also asked me to come to their offices, but again I said no, I won't go. You guys come to my church. I gave them the address of the church. And they come and interview on 18th in this building. And also, uh, Church of Love in Sochodong, the pastor and the elders that I know came to our church. So, how should I love my Lord? How should I serve my serve and protect my church? My overseer didn't urge me to do this, but I voluntarily serve and guard my overseer. So 50 years ago, exactly on the day, I invaded into the cells as a spy. Of course, this day is my glory and my pleasure. But I have had many sufferings so far. But whenever I face the troubles, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, spiritual gifts, sometimes I was, I was not humble. I was proud. And I lower myself. That is how I, ha I, ha I have had my church life. I don't want to be possible for, but I have been leaving this South Korea for 50 years. No one can stop the time and tide. I appreciate God for having me this chance. I appreciate God. This worship service, 11 a worship service, is will be broadcast, broadcast to around the world. What I'm saying here will be broadcast all around the world. I want to give thanks to God and you for this chance for me to give glory. And your beloved, respectful, the overseer, I want to give him the thanks and also appreciate the saints. Please, protect my church. A couple of days ago, I was in trouble. One of my junior, my friend, he texted me. And I record my own video clip for him. Dear, protect your church. Protect your soul. Protecting the church means, is, protecting your soul. That is the way of life. Of course, I was in trouble because I was so weak. But anyways, since I knew the truth, May you also be encouraged in the name of Jesus for the church. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me this great gift. I came to remember the very day when the uh, Pastor Shinjo Kim came to the Korea for the first time to protect our family. Uh, Beria International Theological Seminary is totally different with others. 
this seminary is only for the return to the word movement. You don't have to be necessarily the pastor, but you don't know when God will choose you in the church. You have to prepare yourself. Even your son, even your grandson, for God to use your descendants. God always has a thought uh, those who are prepared. That's why the Lord uh, selected to David. And the Lord Jesus also selected the Paul the Apostles to be the vessels. Which are which is which will be uh, persecuted by, uh, by many na nations. Even after I pass away, this movement should be going on. So make your family members enter the Beria Theological Seminary. So, uh, and for concerning spirim, spiritual leader teaching course, this is not just for the elders. Of course, this is an obligatory course for any ordained deacons to be the elders. Uh, as there are three uh, three spiritual beings in the Bible, the spiritual leaders must know this. This course is for um, supreme spiritual leaders of the Song Rock Church and to gain much spiritual experiences. Please prepare yourselves for the future. Make your time to learn on Saturdays of the spring courses. Please uh, try your best to be the spiritual leaders. So in the lobby, um, you can get the additional information about it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do not complain about be late time. Thank you.